Hello everyone and welcome back to my continued construction of the International Space Station in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. This is sort of a dry test run trying to figure out if I can do it and uh, things have not been going perfectly right. But as you can see here I decided to finally try out Canadarm. I got some tips and figured out that I really needed to slow it down, reduce the acceleration and then it seemed to work out. We're taking out the payload that we brought up with the shuttle the previous time, which is the PMA-3 and the Z-1 truss. In between them is a tug, just in case, and it turned out to be useful. But we can't actually use the tug to attach the Z-1 truss, because currently the Z-1 truss is connected to the tug on the port that it needs to be connected to the station. But anyway, uh, here uh, I've let go of the assembly, and at least PMA-3 is currently attached to the station after having been brought out of the shuttle bay with the arm. So I'm quite pleased about that. Sorry about not including video footage of the arm actually getting out, it out of the payload bay, but I forgot to press record during that time. Uh, so yeah, that's an unfortunate mishap. Now you might wonder why we decided to take the entire assembly, the PMA-3, the tug and the Z-1 truss out together instead of like taking the Z-1 truss out first, placing that, and then maybe placing the Z, uh, PMA-3 and just leaving the tug off to the side. And the reason was because we had tried to put the tiny little docking port for the Z-1 truss onto the station and it wouldn't go where it needed to be. We tried to use KES and uh, Kerbal with a drill and uh, do all the things, Kerbal inventory system, but it didn't work. And so here I've sent a Kerbal out to see if we can grab this large docking port in the back of the shuttle bay and attach that to an existing uh, common berthing mechanism, that's what it is, on the station, and then place the small docking port on this. But that didn't work out. And you can see the small docking port is on the Unity module. The problem is it's not in the right place. It's supposed to be 90 degrees away from that on the side, um, yeah. Uh, so I, I, tr I thought about maybe attaching it to that, but uh, you can't attach it directly to the docking port. The problem is that the Uni module itself in this community ISS pack doesn't have the right hitbox. And so we can't really attach it anywhere. I think it's the convex concave issue thing. Uh, one version or another, all the concave meshes didn't work anymore, and this has one of those meshes. So that's why we couldn't put the Z1 truss on first, which was the plan. We were supposed to have the docking port attached, put the Z1 truss there, and then we could put the PMA3 and that would have been that. But now we have to do something a little bit more complicated. What we need really is an adapter between the common berthing mechanism and that small docking port, the propellant only docking port. Actually, technically, in real life, the Z1 truss had a common berthing mechanism at the bottom of it. But that, uh, with these models, that's too big for the Z1 truss. That's why I didn't put one on, on in the first place. So I, I felt it wasn't a very good fit. But anyway, we need to send up an adapter. And to that end, we have a Delta II launch. And that's because, well, the Atlas V didn't exist yet. I don't have a model for the older Atlases in this install. And anyway, it was just the best option. It was the right payload mass anyway. And it is on the American side of the station, so figures to use an American launcher. So, yeah, uh, it is a Delta II 7320, so no third stage, only three boosters. And it was sort of a tight thing as far as whether this has enough Delta V to get the payload to orbit. Uh, the payload is a tug plus the adapter module. Uh, sorry about that fairing separation, I need to fix that. So here's the AJ-10. Also, the fairing on the Delta II is a little bit big. But anyway, th that's what we've got there. A tug, and then uh, on the small docking port of the tug, the adapter module, which is basically just a common briefing mechanism, a little uh, tank, and then the small docking port. So, yeah, the AJ-10 will get this to orbit just barely. You can see the engine stops 181 km periapsis and actually the program didn't uh, think that that was orbit enough I had to stop it and then the tug gets to the station 
Now the tug is a TRS, which was meant to boost up Skylab, and it was a teller-operated retrieval system, which meant that it really had to be controlled from the shuttle. It wasn't really meant for this kind of rendezvous, um, uh, you know, autonomous rendezvous. So yeah, sort of cheating on that a little bit, but I didn't cheat on the efficiency of it. It's still using hydrazine thrusters, which is very inefficient. So I'm taking a hit there at least. I haven't upgraded the thrusters to some better fuel, which I would really like to do, but I'll just leave it be like this for now, uh, as a piece of existing hardware. And we'll just hope that they eventually figured out how to add a program into a computer core so it could make an autonomous rendezvous. Uh, here we have the docking of this adapter module very carefully. Actually, it took a long time for me. I really drove my viewers nuts during the live stream, I think. Uh, trying to figure out what to do about this whole docking port situation. And uh, so, this is a brief fraction of the time compared to that. A little bit of satisfaction as I put this adapter into place. But I assure you, from now on, all the dockings will be very, very slow and careful. Partly because as the station grows, so will the lag. So we certainly don't want to have to redock things, have to move back out and reposition and all of that when we have greater lag here. All right, so there we go. And of course we need to move the tug off to a safe distance. And now we're going to have to grab that Z1 truss from the other end with the arm and move it over. Now we could do that in one of two ways. We could sort of bring the tug off and have it stand by with the Z1 truss as we grabbed it. But first I decided to try to just separate the Z1 truss after moving the arm close to it first of course. The Z1 truss doesn't have any control on well it does have a reaction wheel uh, because that's where the gyroscopes of the station are. And so, yeah, it does have that much control, but it doesn't have RCS or anything like that. And it's 8 tons, it's not a light module. It's a tiny module, but it's not light, it's very heavy. And as you can see here, when we undock it from, from the tug, from the TRS, it decides to drift in a way that the arm cannot catch up with. So, I ultimately go with the idea of separating off the tug with it, so the tug could help with uh, sort of station keeping, if you will, making sure that it's within arm's reach. This turned out to be a lot more difficult, especially because the Z1 Truss's own hitbox didn't make obvious where the arm could attach it, uh, attach to it. Uh, you actually have to move the arm into it quite a little bit before an attachment actually works out. Now people have told me about uh, CX Aerospace and I've been told that those parts are also realism overhaul compatible so I'll look into that uh, to solve potential future hitbox issues using those parts instead of the community ISS parts but for now I've got these parts so I'm just going to use them and maybe we'll have sort of a mixed station using the community ISS parts for part of it and using the CX Aerospace parts for the other part. But anyway, we now have the Z1 truss on our arm and slowly driving viewers completely insane. Well, no, actually they were quite tolerant of it on Twitch, I have to say. They're very patient viewers on Twitch. As I slowly, slowly move the arm into position, at, I think the real arm moves much slower, but it felt like realistic speeds. I swear all my docking stuff with uh, this station and moving the arm at least gives a decent semblance to how they originally moved. So here we go, we're uh, lined up but the arm has to let go of the piece so that it can dock. You can't dock it with it still attached to the arm. And... I think it's already done. I think it already docked right there. So that's pretty cool. We've got PMA3, we've got the Z1 truss. 
Now we've got uh, another problem as we deploy the Z1 trusses, antenna, and little tiny solar panel. And that other problem is refueling the station. Oh, first we have to dock the two uh, TRSs to the station. In the back of the shuttle, we've got a common briefing mechanism, but neither of the TRSs has a common briefing mechanism. That's not one of the docking ports they're equipped with. So we can't actually bring either one back down in the shuttle. So they both have to be docked to the station at PMA3. So here's the second one, which we docked to the first one. And, okay, as I was about to say, we need to sort of refuel the shuttle. The shuttle itself doesn't have enough fuel to get back home safely. I mean, I could splash down again like I did last time. That's easy enough. But uh, we would like to make sure it can hit the right trajectory, which takes some RCS fuel for KOS. So, the safe margin is 400 meters per second, is what we want to deorbit with. That includes the actual deorbiting fuel. So, I have progress. This is an updated progress. This is an SSTU progress being launched on a Soyuz. Um, if you take a look at the KOS window there, I've called it Chiti Soyuz. And that's because it is using Sintin instead of Kerosene, which some Soyuzes did. And Sintin is just sort of a highly refined, very expensive Kerosene. It was used in the OMS engines of Buran. And there was a Soyuz that used it, but it would be very expensive, so it's not very practical. It does provide a little bit better ISP for the Soyuz engines, which allows for a somewhat better payload to orbit. We're not really making use of too much of that, it just adds a little bit more margin in this case. I'm carrying the normal Soyuz payload, I mean the progress payload, but the progress payload in this case is purely fuel for the shuttle. And so that's MMH NN204. The fuel for the progress itself is the UDMH and inhibited red fuming nitric acid 3. Now, as far as how much actual fuel it's giving the shuttle here, it's got a thousand units each of MMH and N204, which is about one ninth of the shuttle's capacity. So it's not that much. Um, it'll help a little bit, but it might not help enough. And ultimately, when we get to the station and fuel up the shuttle and see how much Delta V it has, I decide that maybe we'll need another trip. Obviously, these weren't done. The first progress trip to the station, I think, well, there was definitely a progress trip to the station after the shuttle returned from this mission to deliver Z-1 Trusts and PMA-3. Uh, but certainly there wasn't any progress mission to refuel the shuttle. Uh, that never happened. But, you know, uh, this is my station. I'm uh, figuring out how to solve the problems I have as best I can. And I would like to run, uh, land the shuttle at the runway this time. That would be nice. So, I'll take whatever measures I need to to try and make that happen as best as possible and working towards better solutions. Here we go, we need to find some of that uh, elusive magnetism on these realism overhaul docking ports. And it is docked, I transfer the fuel and then separate off the progress. Now we have to test this progress out. Um, this is, in theory, the progress that we will, we will continue to use. So we want to make sure that it's alright. Actually, initially I found out that this SS2 Progress had the wrong dry mass. Its dry mass was actually the filled mass, the payload plus dry mass for the real Progress. So I have to fix that. It's probably already fixed. This is uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. That's the realism all overall configuration and they've probably updated for 1.2.2 already. So no problem there. Here I'm waiting for it to basically explode. And of course, uh, we remember we had a little bit of a problem with the previous progress, the old style progress, with the whole explodey thing. But it looks like this one, maybe, maybe, yes, yes, a successful explosion of the progress as it should do. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.